Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here with me today as I make some bath bombs. My name's Tammy. I own Walnut Creek Bath Boutique. Bath bombs. So I wasn't going to make bath bombs, guys. I was done until like towards the fall, but I have requests for bath bombs and I am completely out of them. So this weekend I have been making wax melts and bath bombs all weekend long. This is Tuesday night and I didn't tape anything. I can't remember the last time I had a weekend of high production and I didn't tape a thing. <laughs> I was just down here plugging away. I thought I would show you the end of my bath bomb making uh, journey over there. I am going to move you over to this other side counter that I have where I usually do all my bath bomb making. I'm going to show you my Arbor Press and just the process of my bath bomb making. So <laughs> if you're interested. <laughs> so guys, here's the thing. I love my bath bomb recipe. It took me four years to get to the point where my recipe works for me 90% of the time, no fail. I love it. Love it. Uh, the problem I have with it is when it hits over 50% humidity, I start having issues with it. So this year I was like, well, do I spend, you know, two or $300 on a dehumidifier and try to find a spot for it in here? It's like, I really don't want to do that, guys. I've been spending too much money this year. So a much cheaper option for me this year is I did purchase a recipe from the Bath Fizz and Foam website, and it is Robin's High Humidity Bath Bomb or something like that. I'll link it down below so you guys can check it out. This weekend in here, it was about that 55% humidity, and it worked wonderful. I had no problem no problem. I got through the whole mixture. I didn't add any, any binder whatsoever. Uh, even the end of the mixture was just easy to mold. Normally that last bath bomb wants to give you a little bit of trouble. I don't know if it's because I didn't have to add binder that it didn't. Uh, but yeah, I had no trouble. And the next day and two days later, there's no warts, there's no powderiness. They just look lovely. I'm really happy with that recipe. I will try to next year kind of tweak my own recipe. I still want my own recipe just because of labeling is going to be easier with my ingredients. And if I can just tweak what I have for those high humidity situations, I it will make my life easier. So next year, a little earlier in the summer, I'm gonna work on that. I did master batch this recipe as well, and I master batched my recipe for this fall. So those, I have some, some bags over here ready to go. I'm really excited about that. I may show you that another time. I know there's other videos out there. Uh, Bath Fizz and Foam has a video of her master batching, so it's not like I would show you anything you can't find elsewhere, so I don't know. You let me know if you're interested in seeing me do it. <laughs> I don't know why it would be any different, but I'm going to take you over there and let's see if we can get some bath bomb done before it gets too late. What time is it? Oh my gosh. It's seven o'clock. <laughs> I'm usually on the couch by now. <laughs> Look, maybe just one batch of bath bombs. The reason that I hate making bath bombs so badly is how much it does just destroys my room. I mean, dust everywhere. So yes, I spent a good two hours master batching almost 20 bags, two different um, recipes. Now my room's cleaned and I'm not making a huge mess by making some bath bombs. So. And they're always gonna be there. If I just need to make a couple, I can. This I have on here is for one ounce of fragrance oil. So I have this specifically for my little samples that I get. And I'm just gonna throw them in here as gently as I can so I don't get airborne stuff in here. There is SLSA in here. So. There. No mess, guys. So in honor of my Aunt Lydia, I'm going to do Ancient Waters. This is her all-time favorite bath bomb. She's like, she loves bath bombs. <laughs> She's always upset when I run out of my Ancient Waters. To do green, I'm going to do blue one. And I have a cheat on the wall in front of me. 
yellow five, one to four. So I'm gonna do one blue and four yellows. But first things first, I'm gonna get my uh, liquid ingredients mixing up in here. So I am gonna use a pinch measuring here. Make sure I'm doing this right. So blue one, one of those. One, two, three, four. Let's see what color we get with this. It's kind of a kermity green. <laughs> not, not really what I was going for. I mean, I know it's a green, right? And it should not be green, it should be blue, but I need a green on my shelf. I'm gonna put in another blue. It's still a little greener than I was looking for. I wanted more of a blue green or more of a turquoisey green, but I added blue and yellow. What was I expecting? <laughs> but I'm gonna call this good. I'm gonna add my citric acid, sifted and ready to go. And now I'm gonna mix this in. I'll be right back. And I have my embeds. I'm just gonna add some green embeds to this. And I'm gonna just start molding. So I have my bowl on a scale. I put 6.25 or so ounces of mixture in my mix here. And then I'm just dropping in three to four random, you know, embeds. Anywhere between 6.2 and 6.3 is where I will fill my mold up. And then my label says six. Then my Arbor Press. So it's been a while since I've shown everybody my Arbor Press. And I've ha I have a couple videos out there, but I'm not sure everybody's watching old videos. So when I started doing bath bombs, especially if I did like this weekend where I made five different scents, so I probably made 50 or more, 60 or more bath bombs, um, I was exhausted. I, I was just white. I have these like little Milky Way bath bomb molds, just like that. I don't know where I saw the thought of getting an armor press for this and using that, but I ran with it. I want some some uh, glitter. I try to make these a little off center so it'll make the spinning action happen. I don't know guys, that, that part of my bath bomb game isn't very up, up to speed yet. But this is a Kata mold that I'm using. And I just, you don't have to put much, much pressure on this. I'm putting firm and I rotate this. Oh, let me see if I can get any light. Let me see if I can move the lights here for you guys. Ah! See if that's any better for you. But I rotate the uh, one inch like little lever all around this bath bomb mold so that I don't get a weak point. I have had these crack and I have broken a bath bomb mold using the server press. That's just the chance I'm willing to take for my, my uh, arms. That looks a little better with a little glitter on it. Can you see the glitter? See if that works any better for you.
think. I have found that putting my glitter in dry, like in the bottom of this, I think it holds better because it's being pressed in. When I first started doing this, guys, I was making such a mess because I would have this on the scale <laughs> and I would be trying to fill my mold instead of just tearing this off. It's like, good night. Sometimes <laughs> I wonder about me. <laughs> I would make things so much harder on myself than it needed to be. So guys, this was my number seven, my last bath bomb. I get seven for a one ounce fragrance oil batch. So now I'm gonna make a couple macaroons with my leftover. I either make macaroons or bath bomb surprises. You know what? I'm gonna make a couple bath bomb surprises instead. I have my little ice cube tray that I've had forever. Maybe get one out of here. And then I put a little grow pill in it that I get these from Amazon. And I call them bath bomb surprises. And the kids eat this up. They love it. The parents love it because they're cheap. I sell these two for five usually. And anytime I have left leftover mixture, they either become part of a macaroon or they become a bath bomb surprise. And I used to throw this away. Can you believe that? So wasteful. All right, guys, that's it. I'm done with this one. I might do one more. I like to put my fragrance oil with my bath bomb so I remember what is what. That's how I do it. I'll bring you back and maybe I'll show you some packaging or shrink wrapping or I don't know, something maybe. <laughs> Hang tight, I'll be right back. So next day, I will flip them. So they're still in their little Milky Way molds. And I just flip them. All right. Let them dry for another 24 hours and then I'm gonna package them up. All right, I brought my shrink wrap system in here just because the lighting is better. This counter is a little too high for me to do a lot on. I usually use my pool table, but for this, I thought I would bring it in here and show you this. It does come with a foam uh, protector, heat protector, and then this rubber mat. And then I can just take my bath bombs I usually am only able, only good enough to do about two rows, sometimes three, but I'm just gonna stick with two for now. And I take my wand, try to keep any, too much of the wrinkling and doubling up of my, um, what is this, biofilm, I do use a, biodegradable film, press it down, lean it over, and then you can do this. Press it down, lean it over. When I first got this, I wasn't very good at it, and I don't know that I'm super good at it now. I still find that I have a little bit of trouble sometimes with it, but for the most part, I don't have too much trouble. I use this for wax melts. I'm going to be using this for my soaps for my Covered Bridge Festival. But right now I'm really considering whether I want to have a different film. I still want to do biodegradable for my wax melts. My wax melts, I can't really store them 
next to each other too much because that scent carries through from one to the other so badly. I'm not sure if maybe I shouldn't get a non smell through or whatever it's called for my wax melts. Because I don't like to waste, I'm going to put the leftovers in here for my bath bomb surprises. And then I will take my heat gun to them. Takes a second to warm up, but once it's warmed up, then it goes pretty fast. And my heat gun's on the floor. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep these with the scent bottle just until I get them labeled. With the humidity, it's down to 59 in here. <laughs> I do wanna get them wrapped fairly quickly. So I'm gonna be making probably a good 100 or more bath bomb surprises um, in the next month or so. So I'm just gonna hold on to these because this one might fit even two. That one definitely will fit one. So I'm gonna hold on to these so I can use that for my bath bomb surprises or that'll fit my macaroon, even a shampoo bar maybe. It's been a few days since I was finishing up. I have them all wrapped. I have all my pictures taken and now I need to label them. So I have my label sheet here. I get these labels from online labels. They're the oval little labels. So I'm gonna, I kind of put it on the bottom a little bit just so it doesn't uh, cover up a little bit of the glittery on top. And these go in my big tub. If I can, can remember, I'll put a picture of my tub. I absolutely love that thing. I get asked all the time where I got it. It was like Big R. I don't know who all knows what Big R is. It's kind of like a TSC type of store and I love that thing. I wanted to kind of show you a little bit about my labels. I only needed my vitamin C labels for this to finish. And so if I would have printed off my vitamin C labels and then all of these other labels would be blank, I don't need them. I went through my fragrance oil and I chose the fragrances that I am gonna be making bath bombs with next. So I went ahead and added the names of my bath bombs that I'm gonna be making. And the, the labels are done, I'm not wasting a sheet. I always kinda try to think ahead of what I'm gonna be doing so I'm not wasting a label sheet. I try not to run it through twice because I've never had a whole lot of luck with that. That's ready for me to go as soon as I am done making my next round of bath bombs, which is gonna be a little while. Then I got to thinking, guys, I'm out of my kids' bath bombs again. I can't keep bath bombs in stock, which is a really good problem to have, and I'm very thankful <laughs> that people really like my bath bombs, and it's just such a hot seller for me, but I can't keep them in stock. <laughs> I wanted to show you, too, my macaroons that I made with all of these extra uh, bath bomb dust at the end of the bowl. I have my macaroons ready to go. I did go ahead and take a couple of my random end pieces of my shrink wrap and I just sealed these up really quickly. I'll probably be making macaroons in the next month or two and I can just pull those out and finish them without trying to make up a little bit of frosting for just those three macaroons. It doesn't make any sense. So that way they're protected and they're ready for me when I am ready to make those. Finally, I got my card. You may have seen this before. It's no different than my other card I just had to change the ingredients on the back. And I have to give this to every person that orders a bath bomb. They get a card with it so that I have uh, given them all the information that they need. I'm just going to leave you here. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.